skated a couple of days in a row. So uh, he won't play tonight, but um, then we're going to get a day off or two, and he'll be back full practice. Saw Logan O'Connor out there on the bench house. Yeah, I haven't seen him much. I've been missing him at the rink, so I couldn't tell you. But, I mean, obviously he's got a long uh, way to go, but uh, I'm glad he's back and around the rink a little bit and sure itching to start his, um, like, workouts and rehab process. Do you think he'll be around the rink more? Like oh, yeah, all of our guys will be around. Yeah. Duhame hasn't really been a scorer at the NHL, but even using him on scoring lines, and he's benefiting it's really helping the team. Has anything about his game surprised you in any way since he got here? No. Um, like we really liked his game watching him on video. The, and par part of what makes him effective on some of those lines is his forechecking ability, ability, his heaviness on pucks. He's a trusted defensive player. I think he's just scratching the surface of what he can get to on the offensive side. Like I think when you break in the league and you're a physical player and you're known for your penalty killing and, and defensive play, um, you put a high importance on it and then you start to try and develop and, and get more impactful on the offensive side. And I think that's just where he's at in his career right now. We've gotten sort of past the where the new guys are just running on adrenaline and they're settling in. Just how do you think Casey is? sort of settled in for this role here? I think he would work in progress. You know, it reminds me a little bit of like when Drew first got here. It didn't happen overnight for him. He's putting the work in. I think he's playing with a really good conscience on the defensive side. Still not perfect. Like just still caught in between a little bit of using his instincts and playing instinctual hockey and trusting that and still trying to play mistake free, systematic, um, you know, good in the structure type play. Um, and I want him to find a balance there. You know, I think he has another step to get to on the offensive side of it where he can get more dangerous using his feet more as a solution. But overall, I'm really happy with the way he's played. And, and I see certain games where he kind of lets loose a little bit. He's more impactful. Um, like to see that on a like a nightly basis, a little bit more consistency with that. But he's aware of it, and he's working at it, and you know we're seeing like like gradual improvements in a bunch of different areas for him. But you mentioned fatigue in that last game. Energy looked good on the ice. Smoke. Yeah. Are you feeling that's? Yeah, you know what I said it the other night. It was a strange one because generally when we talk about fatigue, we're talking about you know, actually mustering up enough energy to play and play physical and play with emotion. I thought we did that the other night. Like, even looking back at the tape, there's, as the game went on, we got stronger in that area. Um, so, but mustering up enough energy and, wor and just concentrating on working doesn't always lead to, like, perfect... Um, a perfect game on the mental side of it and we just like some of the mistakes we made were, were just like absurd and I wanted the guys to see that it's mistakes that we don't normally make um, so it's lack of focus like I know our guys prepare the right way all the time but it's either just a lack of focus or being mentally tired or trying to grind through it on the on the physical aspect and so obviously it's disappointing but like we've had now another day to rest and kind of digest that game and look at it and try to get ourselves back on track. So I'm confident that we're going to be better tonight. After a handful of games that are left, what is the balance that you want to strike with guys ramping up intensity alongside not wanting to risk overextending anybody right before game one? Yeah, like we don't want to do that period, you know. Um, but we also want to play to win and get home ice. It's, it's important to our team, I think. Um, I, I don't find it to be an issue that guys play hard, as hard as they can play for four games. They've been doing that for 78, right? Why stop now? Um, like some games have been better than others, but it's you still want to go out and put your best foot forward and play as hard as you can in whatever minutes that I allot to you on, on the ice. So um, that's what I want to see. I mean, it's important games. We want to play and we want to be fine tuning and we can still be working on things. Like we addressed a handful of issues that we've had here recently on the defensive side of the puck and I want to see improvement tonight, like immediately. I know he's rehabbing up there with the Eagles, but a few weeks ago you said you would like to see Kovalenko yeah. practice. Is that now less likely with 
Ten days left. Well, I would have liked to see him come out of his season and come right in here with 15, 10, 12 games to go, whatever it was, and start playing games for us, you know, and get a look at him and see if he can. we feel like he can help us as a regular into our lineup. But unfortunately, the injury, like now he hasn't played in almost a month, and it's hard just to jump in an NHL lineup. With any of our young players, we'd be like, well, you got to go down and play five, six, eight games or whatever, and then we'll call you up and take a look at you uh, when you're playing well and making a positive impact there. Uh, that being said, I'd still like to get a look at him, but I, I, we're kind of running out of time here. Coach, kind of piggybacking off what you know, Megan was talking about, two seasons ago you guys had the game against the Blues that you said kind of in the room was like, all right, we're ready to go, we got it. Do you need to see a game like that here in the last five where it's like, that's our blueprint, we know we've yeah. got it? Yeah, I'd love to see a, a, like a rock-solid identity game that you know checks the boxes on our work ethic, competitiveness, detail in our game, where we're hungry, as hungry defensively to shut plays down and close plays out as we are on the offensive side of it. If that was, you know, score a lot and don't give up much, I'd love it. Um, so, like, that's that's our goal, like, kind of every night. But it, should, it certainly, I think, can help the psyche of the team. Like that year against St. Louis, I think we'd lost four in a row and we're kind of stumbling and bumbling around and like we're getting ready to enter a, a big playoffs. And like we, I think the guys really just got their focus back and got dialed in and were able to kind of turn it back around. It's a, again, it's a fine line between winning and losing and winning big and, and losing big, you know, and getting embarrassed a little bit like we did the other night against Dallas. It's not, you know, you know. Sometimes it just happens. You know. So, and the most of it is mental. Like a large part of the game is mental. It's not just what kind of ability you have. You know, you have to be focused and dialed in on a nightly basis, or you're not going to win. Last one. Do you name Flurry Frank? That's kind of yeah. going on, ongoing for the last week. Sounds like he had to get a ride this morning, and then he yeah. paid a lot of money to get his car fixed. Do you have an appreciation um, for that type of relationship that can sustain even after? <laughs> yeah, I do. And it's kind of, I've heard the story now how that started, just like sort of a funny comment about Fleury's age and what he was doing at 50 or something in the net. Um, I think it's great. I, I think it's, it's like, that's why it's awesome playing against old teammates and friends or people that you grew up with or played junior with, you know, it's, you can be competitive and hard and still get together after the game for beer. Um, I, I don't know, I will say this, just to keep chipping in, I don't know why he drove his car. Like, if I'm pranking <laughs> Flurry on his car, there would have, there, I would have been catching a ride yesterday and today to make sure that that just couldn't happen. But, you know, he thought he'd risk it, and now he's paying the price for it. <laughs> It'd be a big lesson learned there. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, playing against Minnesota, your old team, you know, you've been through it already, but does that help to have that behind you and maybe feel like this is a normal game? Yeah, this is uh, it's the third time we're facing them here, um, so I kind of know what to expect. Um, you know, it doesn't get easier playing your friends, but, um, you know, there's no friends out there, so um, you just got to get a big one tonight for them. Was it just you and Flurry at dinner? No, no, no. We had a we had a big group of guys. I mean, this probably is a, a nod to the bond and you know what you had there, the connection. I mean, he wouldn't yeah. do this, you know, with you if you were just some other teammate. You know? I hope. I hope he. Uh, I hope we think he thinks we're good friends. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll take it as a, a compliment or something. Like that, yeah. Was it just a steak dinner? It was a steak dinner. Yeah, yeah. had a nice steak, some uh, some good sides too. So it was great. In a game like tonight, where you guys are still fighting for home ice advantage, is it difficult to focus on just this game at hand without looking ahead to Saturday and how big that game will potentially be? No, I think it's uh, I think it's important. You know, we go game by game mentality. Um, you know, that's how it's going to be moving forward for us. So um, I think the, the, the group's done a good job preparing for you know game at a time, and uh, you know it's a big one. I know the team was really looking for Georgiev to have a bounce back performance in the last game, and definitely not his fault when the game turned out the way it did. How did you feel about this performance? Who was it? Sorry, uh, Georgiev. Oh, I thought he was good. I, I didn't think we, uh, I think we were good in front of him. I think, uh, I think we got to be better defensively. Um, you know, hold back a lot of those chances or were preventable from, you know, outside of the crease. And you know, I thought he did a good job. Coach, I mentioned fatigue from the last game. Did you 
kind of feel that? And are you feeling like, is that energy a little bit higher tonight? I think we, you know, I think we've done a good job preparing, um, preparing ourselves, you know, our bodies, and um, you know, it's no excuse. Everyone's playing the same schedule, so um, it's important to prepare the right way. Thanks, you probably knew he'd come out. You knew something was happening. Yeah, I had an idea. Was that? I had an idea, yeah. But you probably didn't know the scope of this night. Like, that was probably bigger than you anticipated. I figured there was going to be a bang for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I'll figure it out. I'll get the, I'll get the tires back on. How long did it take you to come up with the toilet paper idea for his car? Pretty on the spot, to be honest. I, I didn't have many resources. It was kind of, I had kind of had to piece it together pretty quick. Well, where'd you get the toilet paper? I can't, I can't tell my sources. Yeah, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. How much help did you have? You have is that a one-man job for you, or is that one-man job? That was it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. <laughs> it was more than one-man job for him. He also had help from people with your team too, didn't he? To get in the lot. He had, he had inside sources, he had <laughs> outsides, I don't know, he might. He must know everyone in Colorado at this point, I don't know what it is, but he, uh, he did a good job, you know, good, uh, good prank on him. Is there a good security, there's a security guard there, right? Like, you know, yeah, you would, you would think they would buckle down, right? <laughs> take care of their own, but no, they uh, they let him in with the flying colors, everyone, all their, all his buddies, everyone that came with him, so it was good. What do you think of the note? The note he left on the line. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was good. He got me. He got me. I'll, I'll tip my hat to him. So was the apology more in person then than it was for sending a video of the apology? Yeah, yeah I'd say it was more, more in person. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you.